Okay, welcome to chemistry. I'm just doing a test for the camera. And it looks like everything matches up here. Uh, what I'd like to talk about today is pure substances versus impure substances. Um, before you understand about anything in chemistry, you really have to understand the concept of matter. Right? So matter is anything that has mass, stuff, in Occupy space. It's pretty much all around us. It's you, me, these goggles, my glasses. Pretty much if you can touch it, it's, it's matter. Right? So matter can be classified as impure or a pure substance. And the first type of substances we're going to talk about are what we call pure. And they can be classified as either an element, which you'll find on the periodic table, there's a hundred plus elements on the table. Um, you're probably familiar with some of them, like hydrogen and carbon and helium and, and so on, oxygen. And then there's compounds. When we take those elements and we combine them to get different chemicals. Okay. Well, elements, they're substances whose atoms have the same number of protons. In other words, all carbon atoms should have the same number of protons, which are six. And they behave very, very similar um, in chemical ways because of that. Some examples of elements would be gold and silver, carbon and helium. No matter which way I try to break down these elements, I still have them as a pure substance. Um, gold, which formula, its formula comes from Latin, aurum. It's the reason why we don't call gold geo, but we call it AU because of Latin. And some elements similar to silver also have Greek or Latin um, um, word sources. Right? In Italian, the word silver, argento, is um, very similar to, to silver's um, chemical symbol. But anyway, the big idea here is if we have gold and we keep on cutting it, we're still going to get gold atoms. It's pure, right? So another pure substance that we have are compounds. And compounds are substances made of two or more different elements that are chemically combined in a specific ratio. And I stress the word chemically because when these elements get together, they're going to arrange themselves in a certain ratio, chemically and bond chemically. We can't just physically separate a compound. Okay. Some examples of compounds would be water, H2O. It's two hydrogen atoms for every one oxygen atom. And CO2, carbon dioxide, the air that we exhale, is always one carbon atom for every two oxygen atoms. CO2 is always carbon dioxide. It's always going to react in a 1 to 2 ratio. If it doesn't, then you don't have CO2. It's a different compound. Okay. And then we can start getting into some larger compounds like sucrose, which is table sugar. C12, H22O11. And once again, the ratios are 12 carbon atoms to 22 hydrogen atoms to 11 oxygen atoms. So some of these molecules can get really, really big, and they can make really big chains. But sugar, if I keep on trying to cut sugar in the end, I'm still going to end up with this formula. It's a pure substance. Okay. Now, an analogy that I like to use in class is if you've ever played the game Boggle. Boggle is a game in which there are different die that have letters on different sides of the die. And the player will roll the die and try to arrange the letters to make different words to score points. And the periodic table is a lot like that. For example, if you had the letters C, A, and T, by themselves they're just letters. But if you arrange them in a different order, you convey different messages like a furry pet, a part of a play, or something you put in the wall, right? Attack. Elements are very similar. The 100 plus elements that we have, if we scramble them chemically and arrange them, they're going to make entirely different chemicals. Okay. 
But once again, they're still pure. Right? They're still pure. And then we get into substances that are not pure or impure. And they're called mixtures. And they're physically combined. Okay, they're physically. And their ratios are not always the same. So they can vary. Um, and there's two major types of mixtures. The first is called homogeneous or homogeneous. And these appear uniform throughout. They look the same color, the same texture, okay, to the naked eye or the touch. Some examples of this would be air that we breathe. It looks colorless, but it is different gases. Seawater and brass, which is actually two metals, copper and zinc, that are melted together and mixed and allowed to cool. Okay. Brass is not pure. It's, it's an alloy. It's a mixture. And then we get into some heterogeneous mixtures. Hetero meaning different. Right? They don't look the same. You can see the individual pieces of the mixture. Okay. Um, so they vary in their appearance, in their texture. Some examples would be fruit salad or a fruit basket. You can see the watermelon slices and the cantaloupe and the apples from the bananas and so on. You can tell that there's different parts in that mixture. And also muddy water, right? Muddy water. Italian dressing, right? Here's an example of muddy water, right? I can see that there's different parts in that mixture, right? I can observe that. I see that, okay? And also, if I took copper sulfate, which looks like this, it's a beautiful blue chemical, and I put that in water, and I mix it up, we get a homogeneous mixture. It looks blue throughout. There's, there's some copper sulfate sitting at the bottom there, but it's a homogeneous mixture because it looks the same throughout. Okay? So I really want to get across this idea of homogeneous looking the same. It looks blue to me. I don't see any chunks in there or any different portions of it as opposed to a heterogeneous mixture. I can see that sand sitting at the bottom. Okay. As an overview, we can take matter and we can break it down into pure substances or impure. Can I break it down into further chemicals and substances or is it pure? Can I not break it down? Pure substances are going to be the elements or the compounds that are made from combinations of elements. Impure substances can either be heterogeneous, looking different. This would be a heterogeneous. Or they could also be homogeneous. They could look the same throughout. Okay. Um, homogeneous mixtures you can further break those down into solutions or colloids, okay? which means they have small particles floating around in that solution. Okay? And heterogeneous mixtures, you can see the difference, right? You can see that there's, that there's sand in there floating around. Okay, that's a suspension. Those dirt particles eventually are going to sink to the bottom, right? sink to the bottom based on their densities. Well, how do we separate mixtures? Well, there's a lot of ways to do it. One way to separate heterogeneous mixtures are through filtration. And filtrations are used to separate solids from liquids. Right? For example, if I wanted to separate sand and water, I would set up a filtration. Right? My mixture, the sand and the water, would be poured through a funnel that would have filter paper this is, how, this is how filter paper comes, right? It's as a circle. And you would pour the muddy water in there, and the sand would be trapped behind, right? Because the little pores in the filter paper are too small for the sand to pass through. So the sand would be trapped up here. But the water would trickle, or I like this word, percolate, right? The water percolates through that filter bed because they can wind their way around those molecules of sand that are much larger. And the water would become what we call a filtrate. 
which would collect at the bottom. Right? And we would have successfully separated sand from a water mixture. Okay. And our last slide here, methods of separating homogeneous mixtures. Okay. And one that I like is distillation. It's how um, some people actually get fresh water from salt water. They'll boil off the water and condense it to drink and leave the salt behind. But in distillation, rather than working on particle size like filtration, it works on varying boiling points. For example, if I took copper sulfate, if I took copper sulfate, which is a beautiful blue chemical, and I mixed it with water, we would get this blue homogeneous mixture. We can't filter this because the copper sulfate is going to leak right through the filter paper, unlike sand. So the way this works is our copper sulfate mixture, which is right here, this would be boiling on a heat source. And copper sulfate boils at 150 degrees Celsius, higher than water, which boils at 100 degrees Celsius. So since water has a lower boiling point, it would vaporize. It would evaporate much sooner than the copper sulfate. And the water would vaporize and come up in this inner tube. And this outer tube, you would have water circulating around that inner tube to cool it down. So as those very excited water molecules vaporize, they soon slow down and cool off and drip on the other end is water. And what would be left behind would be your solid. That would be left in the flask because we lost the water. And that's called a distillation.